be a little bit of time to start tonight. Uh, thank you to Chair Drum. I'm deeply disappointed that the budget director will not remain for a line of questioning. Uh, and I expect to hear back from her. I wanted to just focus on savings in our budget and concerns with predictable costs from cuts. Uh, we have a contracts budget of $16 billion. Seems like before we start cutting our own services with city employees, it might be a good idea to cut all the consultants and wasteful contracts that we've been spending all these years. I was heartened to hear that uh, OMB has been working with the controller to review these contracts and find which ones don't need to be registered. Uh, and that being said, I am requesting a list of all the contracts that have been considered which ones weren't registered, which ones were, will you provide that to the contracts? I'm requesting you pause the clock while I'm waiting for an answer. Is there anyone who can answer the question? Problems with muting, Dan. Uh, <clears throat> We'll certainly be happy to provide you with a list of, of contracts. Please state your name for the record. Please state your name for the record. This is this is Kenneth Godner, first deputy budget director. Uh, we, as I said, we will be happy to provide you with a list of contracts that we have registered, um, and we will also attempt to give you a list of, of contracts that uh, were held back and, and not registered. It's a little bit more difficult to spread out the negative but we will attempt to give you those that, that we can identify. Uh, great, and can I have that by the end of the week? Um, we'll make all uh, deliberate efforts to get it to you as soon as possible, understanding that our uh, workforce is distributed uh, currently, but we will certainly make an effort to get it to you as soon as possible. Okay, uh, it, that's great in terms of savings. I guess one of the things I'm concerned about is in but tough budget times, you might want to put off maintenance of your car and not do your oil change all the time. But then at the end of the period, you end up having to pay $4,000 for a new engine instead of those $15 every couple of months to change your oil. So uh, in that way, I think a lot of things that you're cutting have predictable costs from cuts. Uh, so I want to just dig in on youth and seniors because I think those are the places where any cut we make will end up costing us in the long run. I want to join with my colleague Majority Leader Tumbo, Debbie Rose, Adrian Adams on just a, a huge concern over cutting SYEP and the fact that I think we're still looking at a multi-million dollar cut to summer camp and the fact that we're about to go into the summer program. So do we know how much it would cost for the types of criminal interventions we're seeing, putting uh, the kids who are now outside and are getting in trouble for not social distancing and by the way, this isn't happening in my community. In my community on the Upper East Side, I, I would love to see police officers enforcing social distancing, but they're not. And people are just not social distancing, and it is irresponsible, and it is wrong. And when police do walk by, they're not doing any intervention. Uh, and all I'm asking for is even just auxiliary officers to do more. Uh, so in terms of that, uh, what is the alternative that the city is proposing for these 100,000 kids? Uh, in terms of cuts to free pay, uh, what does this mean for families who won't be able to go back to work if they can get a job if now they don't have anyone? So they're unemployed and there's no more free pay. Uh, it's been cut back in parts of the city and uh, it's not going to roll forward either. And so people can't economically recover. What is the cost to the economy for people unable to earn income? When it comes to cuts to the seniors, shutting down our senior centers, Everyone's home. Everyone's going to need to run an AC if they have it, if they can afford it. What's going to be the cost to people going to the emergency room because they're too hot? How much would it be to do socially distancing and cooling centers this summer in the locations? And then similarly, anything we don't do where we're irresponsible with your seniors, that ends up being a Medicaid cost of $15,000 a month at least. Uh, do you have a cost-benefit analysis on each one of the cuts you're proposing to youth and seniors? So I'm going to try to address uh, some of the points you, you, you on. We are exploring alternatives to SYP. Um, we don't know right now how, how big that would be or what the cost of that would be. Uh, clearly, all of this is balancing the life, uh, health, and safety, which are the mayor's priorities. Um, we also have to uh, address the issue of whether 
Um, certain types of programs we've run in the past can be done in a responsible way given the need for social distancing. Can we cut our loaded contracts? Can we, we, we spent a third of a billion dollars buying 300,000 iPads when we could just bought laptops in a non-emergency setting. So going into September, instead of spending half of, a third of a billion dollars, I almost half a billion on iPads, could we actually just plan for the future, plan for remote learning, get every kid in the city a laptop, and spend a couple hundred dollars instead of 500 or 600 dollars? And just plan for the future instead of just ramming up costs in an emergency. Okay, and then that will be it. Ken, you want to respond? Um, we are going to be, as we have been, grabbing every one of our contracts, looking for opportunities to save money and deliver services more efficiently. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, we'll now move on to the next council member.